John Tenniel's Method, The Jabberwock Explains. As is well known, John Tenniel illustrated two books for Lewis Carroll. He created 42 engravings for Alice's Adventures in Wonderland and 50 for Through the Looking Glass. We're going to turn our attention to the Jabberwock, an illustration in the second book, to explain his method. Oh, he wants me to tell you that I'm going to make a mistake, an intentional mistake. See if you can catch it. It isn't that difficult. First, Tenniel begins with a sketch. Now, sometimes we see in his notebooks very loose sketches like these. But for Jabberwock, we only have this one, which is very typical of his sketching. Sometimes he does a finer sketch, not too usual, though, as this illustration here. We can see that he also uses China white ink from time to time. This China white, I believe, was done at a different stage, though, as we will see. Next, he brings in a piece of tracing paper, and he begins to trace. He actually tells us what he's going to do. By means of tracing paper, I make all alterations of composition and action I may consider necessary. Okay, so he traces it. Let's pull it aside and see those alterations. Well, first, he changes the form of the mouth. He has hairy claws instead of bony claws. He brings down the boy away from the foot. And he actually puts on a bow tie, of all things, and a collar. And he thickens the neck and makes some other changes. He even shortens the skirt on the boy. Fashions change quickly, even between the sketch and the tracing. Well, he takes his piece of wood that he ordered from the engravers. He flips over his tracing, places it on top, and... He takes a burnisher and he rubs it down onto the wood. And voila. Now he creates what he calls a finished drawing. Finished means fine in this sense, not complete. There are actually three wood blocks that exist that Tenniel drew on but were never cut. So we can see how fine his drawing is and we can also see that he draws on the wood grain. It's very visible. Many artists in his day covered it up, but not Tenniel. He liked the feel of his pencil on that wood grain. He also makes changes at this stage. He reverts back to the version without the bow tie, and he also reverts back to the position of this one finger, and he actually rounds the mouth out like it was in the original drawing cut. Well, at this stage, Tenniel goes horseback riding, because someone else is going to cut it, and this was common in his day. Tenniel practiced a form of wood engraving called facsimile wood engraving, meaning they were very faithful to what Tenniel drew. They would take their engraver, and they would cut around his lines very, very precisely. It was a long, tedious process. And what we see here is the actual woodblock. This is not something I mocked up. This is the actual woodblock for the Jabberwock. And here is a close-up of it. To show how accurate the engravers were, I have a video, a long-form video called The Blip, the engraver's role in Tenniel's process, so I won't go into any more detail here. Proof. At this stage, Tenniel gets to make alterations. The engraver cut the block, and now he makes a proof. This is probably the first proof after the first cutting. This proof was given to Tenniel. As we can see, he's lightening the background in several places. He most likely thought that the background was too flat and wanted to give it more dimension. He most likely wrote something in the margin telling the engraver, how to recut it, but that was cut off. We don't, it doesn't survive. Here is what we see in the book. On this proof, the marginalia survives. 
and we can see he writes, cut away lights. And that refers to what he's doing on this tree. He's adding China white to perhaps bring that foot off the ground, bring our beast in the air, or perhaps to bring out the form of the beast a little more. He does that a lot. This is what appears in the book, by the way. As we see here, he's bringing out the form of the knight by removing this shading in the background. He does that quite often in his proofing. Well, we saw that he made changes in the face as well. And note that this I call the first touch proof, but really is the first surviving proof. We can see here that there's already a change that's been made from this state proof, the first proof. So it's actually the only the first surviving proof. Here's a second touched proof I already showed you, and we can see he writes this note to the engraver. Light from eyes increased, but must be done very delicately, little more than scratched. He also made changes in the teeth, I should point out. But we can see that the engraver followed the directions pretty well. I would say that's a little more than scratched. Print. Well, printing is really important, of course, but Tenniel is not too involved. To see the importance, see this section here. This is what a bad printer would do. Tenniel did not draw this. He drew this, and that is what they cut. The printer also made the electrotype. They didn't print from the wood block. It would wear out too quickly. So they made a metal version of it through a chemical process. The printer was responsible to get that done. So what was the mistake? What was the howler? There was something wrong with all that I just showed you. Well, remember when I said he flipped over this tracing and he rubbed it down onto the block? Well, if he did do that, what would it print? It would print that? This is what appears in the book. No, it would print this. It would print a mirror image of it. So... He never rubbed that down onto the block. If he did, he erased it. Why? Well, this illustration, this orientation, has a right-to-left direction. This one has the more natural left-to-right direction, which we see a lot when a painter draws a horses coming at us or a train coming at us. It's more often than not this direction. Not always, but more often than not, seems to be the more comfortable way to do it. Also, the boy is in the lower left-hand side. It's more common to put something in the lower right-hand side. It sits more comfortably there. Artists sign their names in the lower right. Logos appear in the lower right of some products, if not the middle. Also, he empowers the boy by not making him lefty, like here, he has this strong stance. Why not give him a strong right-handed blow? The left-handed blow sort of belies that strong stance he has. So if he did burnish that tracing onto the wood, he had to have erased it. What did he do next? Well, he didn't have to retrace it. All he had to do was take a piece of paper or another piece of tracing paper, turn over his original tracing, and rub it down onto that. Then he can take that piece of paper and he can turn it over and rub it down onto the wood. This is a second generation tracing. It works. I've done it many times. No problem. Might be a little lighter. And so the rest is history. As is the Jabberwock himself.